Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today's video we'll look at this Mars Energy Lithmine Phosphate Battery 12.8 volt 1 amp hour Mini. In today's video we'll take a closer look at this battery. Exactly this battery, <laughs> which you can see right here. And this battery is new to me. I haven't seen this so far, I haven't seen the brand. So let's see what it can do. By the way, that's the current pricing on Amazon. Link in the description below, as always. And it does come with a manual. It does come with a nice Mars Energy flyer, which tells you basically that it has a five year high quality warranty service. One question is, how long do those manufacturers exist? So that's always the question, I guess, which I can't answer. So, and you get this battery as well as those M8 bolts up here, already screwed in into the terminals has those plastic handles and they call it a mini. So that means let's look into the specification what it actually means. What is a mini battery? Especially for me, this looks more like a Group 24 housing versus a mini. But for the manufacturer, it's called a mini battery. These are the dimensions, so you have an idea and also the weight. And diving into this battery more, it does have some BMS protection, they call it out. It's a, with overcharge protection, over discharge protection over current protection, short circuit, high temperature and low temperature. And we'll test that in our teardown. So, and then teardown means for me that I take it apart as much as I can. I usually don't like to destroy the housing because I like to reuse that stuff. I don't want to just throw it away. So ideally we'll be able to reuse, reuse it. So that means that sometimes when it's clued in the bottom, I won't take it out of the housing because otherwise the likelihood that this will, will be used ever again probably not existing and I hate to waste batteries especially when they're good built so we'll see if this one has a good build. It does advertise that it's an easy build an energy system you can do 4P4S which means 48 volt or 51.2 up to 400 amp hours that would give you 20.48 kilowatt hours pretty pretty impressive if you would want to do that at that point it's the question you want to build it with individual ba batteries or, or rather just invest in one big battery but that's up to you and according to that manual on the last page, batteries, battery specification, that's the model name. It has a maximum charge current up to 100 and the best charge current is 25. So it's not 0.2C, it's 0.25C. The maximum continuous discharge and we can see different parallel quantities. We don't have a parallel, so we look at the first value. 100 amp is the max continuous discharge, which is pretty impressive, continuous. The peak is 300. It doesn't say for how long the peak is, but keep that in mind. And it is an IP67 rated housing. As soon as we cut it open, it's not anymore. But uh, the manual itself, it, it's pretty comprehensive. It's not too bad, to be honest. We'll do the capacity test now, and then we'll look into if it does have a current protection, as it calls out. Alrighty, here we are. We pulled 107. 0.46 amp hours out of the battery. Mars Energy right back here. This is a really good result. So I would assume that we have good cells on there. So, all right, looking at a high discharge test. So 100 amp should be no problem. Peak count is 300. And as you may remember, continuous discharge. Literally zero issue here. There is nothing blocking this. Might be no over current protection here, especially when it says maximum continuous discharge is uh, 100 amp. Should have cut off already. Peak current is 300, no cut off. Let's see if the temperature protection kicks in at one point. There we go, 230. That was the inverter. That's exactly where 
The overcurrent protection should kick in when we go too long over 100 amps. It does not have any overcurrent protection here at that point. Maybe around 300 or the temperature is kicking in as we've seen on my channel but also have seen on World Pro's channel video up there. So let's move on and take this battery apart. So coming back from, from both tests, I think it's impressive to see that we have definitely really good cells in here, maybe. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, I wanna check if I saw anything about crate A cells and I believe uh, they were calling out crate A cells and multiple protections, yeah. They call it out. So let's see actually inside if that is the case. So I'll open it up now for you. And you don't have to wait for me too long, so I'll open it up. And within the next second, in a snap, we are here. That's how quick internet can be in all those videos. So don't have to deal with all the opening up, which is good. I have to do that for you. Keep that in mind. Be careful when you want to do that. You can do so many things wrong, so just want to say that. So you can see it. Here we can see up here. Here's the BMS, which seems to be a JVD. I actually don't have Bluetooth with this one, so the only thing what I can see already is we have blue wire here. Eight gauge here on this side. Ideally, we should have also eight gauge here on the other side, which seems to be the case on the negative side. You can see this one is definitely bent over a little bit more. And, oh yeah, it can't get loose. Not good. Um, so what I don't like to see is usually a lot of clue blobs everywhere, but some torquing would be good over here for sure. Uh, it should not get loose like that. You can see a lot of clue over here. Then we can see all the bars bars and I'll give you a little close up in a second as well. We can see there is a most likely a high temperature switch over here, which is not usually rated for cold temperature cutoff protection. So we'll see how that will perform. We'll still do the test. And I'll give you a second in a second more overview here as well, but we can see hydraulic recrimped over here. We see on the negative side that here's some heat shrink, some clue plops here on the terminal side. And we have those cells and we have some checks here on the laser welded bus bars, which come with a hump so that they can contract, expand. I don't see anything in between here, but I think there's something in between. So I have to look into that closer. So I have to be careful. I don't wanna touch anything on accident. Here we are with the entire pack. And it was a good fit in the, in the housing itself. There's still space up there. Um, I see the positive wire. I see a lot. <laughs> so looking from up here, this is what we can see on top. We see those breeding wall breeding. I have to be careful. I don't want to touch anything. There's some kind of interesting routing. Let's see. I don't see any QR code, anything like that on here on this side. Only see that we have those serial numbers on the side. So that might help. So the QR code. In general, it look, doesn't look too bad. Um, when you look at those, it's, they might be re-sleeved. Um, we're looking at the side a little bit. But in general, it, it doesn't look too bad of a build quality. I like that I used bolts and screws and whatnot. I wish I would have seen some, you know, torque marks, stuff like that. Usually they use plop glue, which I also don't like. So some kind of torquing would have been nice. I leave this connected. We have an epoxy board up here. Then we have just the BMS slapped onto the epoxy board with glue, it looks like, on all four corners. We have packing tape around the entire pack to hold it in place. That's all what there is. Then we have high density form. So there's not a lot to that. Let me test the high temperature here. So it's just resting as much as I can see on the side. And it looks like it's just here. Oh yeah, it's glued in there. So this tells you even at 70 degrees Celsius, and I, it's hard to read here in the camera for sure, but at 70 degrees Celsius, that's when the switch triggers, just saying. So this is just a high temperature switch. If in case, and it looks like there might be temperature sensor right underneath here of this BMS, that might trigger um, to stop charging. So that's what we are testing, but then it would be for the BMS and not for the cells, even though it's close, but the BMS can um, just have a totally different temperature from the, compared to the cells. So right now we want to go after this. You can see it's charging. We'll do the high temperature cutoff test.
first. So that means using the heat gun, heating this one up, the switch, and then we'll see if it triggers or not. Please look at this number here. As soon as it stops charging, it will tell us zero, amp is going in. And there it is. Stop charging, let's wait until it continues or can continue. There we go, continues to charge. So what I will do is I'm spraying onto, what I will do is now spraying onto the switch, which is just a high temperature switch, but I will do it anyways. And in the second step, I will spray onto where I think I can see the sensor. I think it's just a high temperature switch. It looks like when I look into the gap here, it doesn't look like it's a, high, a probe or any other sensor. So I don't think this will trick it either, but let's see. A little bit more. Should be enough. Since it looks like it's just a switch, I don't think this will stop. In the meantime, I'll show you that there is a gap between those cells. It looks like they have some uh, foam or whatever is in here. So there is some kind of gap, but here it can expand and contract actually. So it's not intense compressed. Why not? And when you look here, and I don't know if you can see it very well, in between there, there we go, might be the high temperature switch as well. So it doesn't have low temperature protection. Well, that is pretty much all I wanted to test with you guys. It's still charging. So it's advertised with a low temperature protection. It doesn't have it, but the capacity test was outstanding. I, I don't know more about it. That's the only serial number I was able to find. So regardless of the cells, in terms of crate A cells, I doubt it. But <laughs> keep in mind, low temperature protection, it also doesn't have that one, which is sad because they advertise it. High temperature protection they have, pretty good. Like the size, like the... The capacity test was pretty good. It was way more than I expected, to be honest, so that is good. But when you have great A, A cells, that's kind of the range where it should land anyways. So could be older cells, who knows? They look pretty big, um, different shape. As you know, manufacturers are using everything what they can get in the meantime. Slap a bunch of glue together, some packing tape, and throw it into the housing. That works. There is no overcurrent protection, as seen in so many batteries lately. I think there were a couple up there. Um, there's a video from one, for example, which does come with overcurrent protection. Be careful with that. You have to have your fuses and all your system sized accordingly. But other than that, it's the capacity. If that's what you're looking for, if you have a controlled environment with temperature, hey, who cares, right? So everything's up to you. Keep that in mind. Now you see what it looks inside to understand what you would get with the price. And Leave me some questions below in case there's anything you want to know about this battery, which I haven't answered. Thanks for watching. Cheers! <laughs>